The Xiaomi 12T Pro has a new 200 megapixel rear camera. And in part one of this review, we saw that its photography performance is a little disappointing. But let's see how its video shooting capabilities compare against the S22 Ultra, iPhone 13, Pixel 6a, and Poco F4. To start, the focus tracking feature on the 12T Pro does work pretty well, at least for humans and dogs. You can shoot and log from the stock app, which could be useful, and slow motion shots aren't bad, but they're capped at 1080. A nice 4K 120 FPS option like the OnePlus 10 Pros would have been a fun addition. Let's start with some selfie camera shots. We have the 12T Pro's default video mode with the stock camera app, then the stock app with HDR turned on, and lastly, Filmic Pro. All right, here's the 12T Pro's selfie cam. Okay, here's the 12T Pro with HDR on, on the selfie cam. All right, here's the selfie cam from the 12T Pro with Filmic. I do actually prefer the HDR video mode here. You get more saturated and contrasty footage, but it's still not over the top. Filmic is worse in terms of stabilization, but its image quality is fine, just a lot cooler than the stock app. Also, I wasn't able to use motion cam. It just kept crashing. Comparing the iPhone 13 and S22 Ultra, yeah, I really don't like the iPhone's washed out look, but I love the S22 Ultra's better color and sharpness. The Ultra does look a bit less stable, but that's my fault. I forgot to turn on stabilization for this shot. I fixed that mistake on most of the other shots. All right, here's the 12T Pro's selfie cam, and here's the selfie video from the iPhone 13 mini. It's mine. Here's the S22 Ultra selfie camera. Compared to the Poco F4 and Pixel 6a, the 12T Pro's selfie camera does a better job with this scene. All right, here's the 12T Pro's selfie cam with selfie video. Here's the Pixel 6a selfie video. All right, here's the Poco F4 selfie camera. But the S22 Ultra clearly performs the best this time. Here's the S22 Ultra selfie cam with video stabilization turned on, and it really looks great, especially outperforming the 12T Pro's just general blurriness. Here's an interesting problem I noticed with the 12T Pro. Much like in some of the still images that come from this camera, there's pinkish fringing or chromatic aberration present in a lot of shots. You can see it better in the zoomed in footage, and here's what it looks like blown up in editing. Actually, I do like the 12T Pro sharpness. That certainly beats the pixel, but the discoloration needs to be fixed. Another shot from the main rear camera, and filmic Pro does a better job limiting the clipping in the sky, but the stock app still handles itself well. Although the stock app with HDR mode on blows out the sky badly for some reason, the S22 Ultra wins again here. Great color, no blown out highlights. The Pixel 6a comes in second this time. Not bad at all. S22 Ultra wins again, since I can guarantee that its video stabilization works well when turned on. And this test shows off that stabilization, but I think the 12T Pro almost produces better footage. It's brighter, sharper, and a little more colorful. Sadly, there's some focus hunting or OIS issues, and overall the stabilization just needs to be improved generally. By the way, the folks at Ampere sent me this 65 watt charger that can be used with any of these phones, especially since the iPhone, Pixel, and S22 Ultra don't come with a charger in the box, and I've been using it to charge the iPhone and S22 Ultra at the same time, which is really convenient. So if you need a small fast charger with two outputs, this option from Ampere is great. I'll drop a link in the description with a discount code. With this parking lot pan shot, I don't like how the 12T Pro's auto exposure is a bit too active, but it still turns out nicely. The 6A and even the F4 do a good job here too. I think the S22 Ultra wins overall though. After reviewing this footage, I was honestly surprised. I thought iPhones were supposed to be the best for mobile filming, and why isn't the 12T Pro's excellent hardware producing consistently awesome video? So I captured some sunrise footage, and again, the auto exposure is killing the 12T Pro. But if you take the extra step to lock exposure, I would expect it to perform better. But the iPhone really does look nice this time. It also has to tone down the sky, but it does so more slowly than the Xiaomi, and it honestly handles it much better. This walking test is a bit harder to judge. The 12T Pro is having focusing issues. In fact, it's really picking up my footsteps. The iPhone has great stabilization, but its colors are too washed out and it's losing detail. With selfie cameras, I absolutely prefer the 12T Pro. Solid color and stabilization is not an issue this time. So what can we conclude? The 12T Pro is definitely better for filming than it is for photography, but there are problems with stabilization, auto exposure, and that weird chromatic aberration effect. Hopefully these issues can be fixed with software updates, and then I bet the 12T Pro will rival the S22 Ultra 
Ultra for sure. If you're looking to pick up the Xiaomi 12T Pro or another device I tested, you gotta check out Wireless Place since they have Xiaomi devices as well as phones from Google, Samsung, OnePlus, and more. I've bought a few phones from Wireless Place and they always ship fast and internationally, have great prices, plus they include a US adapter for the charger if you need it. Please use my discount code PC10 when you check out. If you want to support the channel or just want to save a little money, a link to the site is in the description. Click right here for part one of my 12T Pro camera comparison. And I'll also drop my full 12T Pro review right here when it's ready. And please subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And feel free to comment with any questions you might have and I will answer them perfectly. Perfectly! Like the way I wrap up my videos.